Hey guys, I'm Ashlyn. I'm Al. We are Lobby Cosplay. And this is Shit Cosplayers Say. We finally reunited after three months. Oh my goodness. It was three and a half months, but who was counting? It was three and a half months. We finally saw each other in person after I know. three and a half months of being apart. It was so far. It was a long time. It was a really, really long time. Previously, we typically didn't go more than like two weeks. We have separation anxiety. We do. <laughs> we got to hang out and we got to open mini Phil. Yes, we got to we got to see Phil. And he well, that is was such mini a joy. Phil. We still don't have regular Phil yet. Mini Phil. And he is such a joy um, to behold. <laughs> so we'll have to show him to you guys at some point. And Elle, Elle brought me some little seedlings. I did. I have a, a vine plant that I have to literally clip every week. And then you stick the ends in water and you suddenly have more plants. And I have a lot of this plant. <laughs> yes. So it was kind of leaning because of which way it had been facing the sun. So now I'm playing Trixies on it and spinning it. So currently the vines are all standing straight up. I mean, that is how you train a plant. How to train your plant. How to train your plants. It seems legit. Part one and part two. But yeah, it was good. And I'm sad again because it's going to be like another month before I get to see you again since the last time. Well, probably, yeah. But I will survive for as long as I know how to love. I know I'll stay alive. You know, we can show everybody mini Phil during our next live show. That's right, guys. We have a live show coming up with Anime Iowa. So you're going to have to check out our Twitch channel for that. So we will be doing a live show of Shit Cosplayers Say with Anime Iowa on August 1st at 10 p.m. You will be able to find it at twitch.tv slash anime Iowa and twitch.tv slash lobby cosplay. So they will be cross broadcasting us to their channel from ours. Yep. So we're super excited to get to interact with you guys again. So be sure to come and hang out with us. I mean, I wish it could have been in person, but we're just not at that point yet. Beggars can't be choosers, I guess. <laughs> I am collecting research to give you all updates on some of the conventions that were mentioned in our Florida Man episode. I have come to find out there is also an anime convention happening in Iowa. We are going to have lots of news for how conventions, at least in Iowa, have gone come the end of July. Yeah. I am very grateful that the two we were guesting for took the initiative early on and canceled. We appreciate you. Because we do not want to be at a convention right now. But we will gladly come into your homes through the computer and bring you a show. That doesn't sound creepy at all. No, not at all. So I'm at this point where now so many of our wonderfully talented friends are in so many, like, pay-for-view, like, burlesque and variety and comedy shows that I don't know that I can actually afford to get tickets to all of them. <laughs> There's like five of them in the next four weeks. Well, stop making friends. I know. Like, I want to support <laughs> all my beautiful performer friends that are kicking ass trying to, like, keep going in this crazy time that we're having. But I'm like, dudes, it's like 15 bucks a ticket every time I have to come to one of your shows. Like, I don't know if I can afford all these shows. That's valid. But there are some pretty awesome ones coming up with Bottoms Up Burlesque, as well as Sup Comedy Troupe, which I think will have actually passed by the time this comes out. And then the Village Theater is actually doing like a burlesque showcase as well. Oh, fine. People are probably like, well, why is all this burlesque? Well, the reason burlesque works so well right now is typically their solo acts on stage. Yes. So you're not having to, like, have actors and performers interact with each other. It's really easy to keep people distanced. So you put one performer on the stage, performer gets off. It's much easier than trying to do a play or something of that nature. Although I hear in some countries they are doing plays and just blocking the actors six feet apart. 
I mean, whatever works. <laughs> Performers will do whatever they need to do to get their butts on stage. That's fair. The thing about SUP, too, is that you've got people that are actually living together and then people that are in each other's, like, close-knit circle. So they're already interacting with one another anyway. There's not any added risk for them to be performing together. And then if it's streamed, then there's no risk to the audience. Right. So, like, you can have, like, a tiny in-person audience so that you can keep with the distancing requirements. But then what's cool about it is the show doesn't then lose a ton of money because they're still able to get virtual tickets. Yes. And then more people get to watch it. So they're able to be responsible and do what they need to do to keep people safe without it financially crushing them in the process. Well, and I'm sure that some people, even though Iowa is fairly open, are still uncomfortable with the thought of going to an in-person show with an in-person audience. So the fact that they can get virtual tickets makes it more accessible to even more people that might not have gone to the show otherwise. I'm actually kind of hoping for a trend in theater that maybe productions will start doing virtual ticket in general. I mean, look at the blow up over Hamilton. Well, I think part of the problem with that, though, from my personal theater experience, has to do with the licensing of the plays where we weren't allowed to record what we were doing unless it was just like in house. I hope Broadway shows start doing this. Right. Not not like local community theater shows. Yeah. Because well, there's a lot of Broadway shows that they've went ahead and recorded and turned into a video format over the years. So it's not that unusual to happen. Hamilton's just the biggest one that I think has happened recently. Well, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to get tickets for Hamilton and haven't been able to. Or at least not in a price range that I can afford because I can't afford the super sweet $500 tickets for Hamilton. Right. I need to go get Disney Plus to watch Hamilton, so I haven't watched it yet. But I really didn't want Disney Plus, but $7 to watch Hamilton sounds worth it. Well, and I've wanted Disney Plus, but since we're just still in the middle of everything with our move and getting our new house set up. So what I hear is you need to come to my house and we need to watch Hamilton. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> valid. <laughs> and we can get the Disney Plus account under you and we can just put it on my TV for that time and then you can keep it and you can put it on your TV. Oh, is that how this is going to go? It could. I, I mean... can pay for the first month and then you can pay oh. for it through the rest <laughs> of the time. We can have joint custody of Disney Plus. <laughs> joint custody. Goodness. Because I still haven't watched Tangled. And it's a travesty, I know. That is a travesty. I know, because everyone wants me to be Flynn Rider. Because you should be Flynn Rider. <laughs> I think I am Flynn Rider. He totally fits your, your type that you play when you cosplay. He's not quite as much of an asshole as many of my characters. Though. Um, He's coming from someone that hasn't watched the movie. I'm just saying. He can't be that bad if she ends up with him in the end of the movie. Some girls are into that. Also, she lives a very sheltered life, you do remember. <laughs> That's true. She lives in the tower. I've never personally had a huge impulse to play her, but I totally would <laughs> under those circumstances. Just just so that I will be Flynn Rider. Yep. <laughs> We're more just fulfilling Ash's needs for certain characters to come to life. I mean, whatever works. <laughs> because that's totally what Adrian... And Dimitri <laughs> are all about. <laughs> to be fair, I actually did the Anya cosplay before you decided to do Dimitri. Details. <laughs> Details. Details. That's true friendship when you will cosplay your friend's animated crushes for them. I mean, <laughs> whatever works. You have to cosplay Ivy, so it's all good. <laughs> it's fine. This is fine. I look really great with a red wig on, though. You, so. you do. I'll take you playing Ivy. It's yep. a fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me miss C2E2, though. Aw. There's always, you know, later. <laughs> Which, speaking of C2E2, our podcast shout-out is actually going to someone we met at C2E2. Yes! This past year. So it's Off the Beaten Podcast, and we met Dion at the podcasters meetup 
We had actually just launched our podcast and never had gone to anything like this before. And he was actually like one of the very first people that we talked to. It actually started, I believe, as a blog. And he just goes up to random people in Chicago and interviews them. And it's just such a neat concept that I haven't seen anybody do before. Yeah, it's a really interesting podcast. And it is, it's definitely a format I haven't seen. It'll be kind of more real in a lot of senses. Like sometimes you're like in the middle of the event that he's going to, like one of his more recent episodes, he's actually at a protest for part of it. And he's like dictating into his phone recorder while he's at this protest. And Dan just does a lot of really cool things in Chicago. It's kind of like the back roads into Chicago. You get to learn all these really cool things you didn't know about the city. And my, I mean, that's where my family's originally from. So it's always really interesting to hear these kind of things. But he's also just a gem of a human being. (laughs) He was so nice to us. Like, here's us just brand new podcasters being like, we don't know what we're doing. (laughs) And then here's Dion who totally knows what he's doing. (laughs) Just being super nice and giving us advice was a very welcoming experience into the podcasting community. Be sure to check it out. We're going to go ahead and put the link in the description and on the Instagram post. It's a good time. And even if you're not from Chicago, you'll enjoy it. Speaking of enjoying things or things that sometimes stop us from enjoying things. (laughs) Our episode this week is inspired by our newest category for the live show called WTF Karen. There's been a lot of talk about Karens in social media and the media in general in the light of Black Lives Matter and masks and COVID and all these different things that have been happening in our country have really like amplified the Karen. And so I started thinking like, are there convention Karens? And there are totally convention Karens. What exactly is a Karen? Well, Wikipedia defines a Karen as... A pejorative term used in the U.S. and other English-speaking countries for a woman perceived to be entitled or demanding beyond the scope of what is considered appropriate or necessary. (gasps) A common stereotype is that of a racist white woman who uses her privilege to demand her own way at the expense of others. Depictions also include demanding to speak to the manager, being an anti-vaxxer, or having a particular bob cut hairstyle. As of 2020, the term was increasingly being used as a general purpose term of disapproval for middle-aged white women. (laughs) That's super enjoyable. (laughs) This is why the episode teaser is a picture of me in Harley's base wig. (laughs) Because Um, Harley's base wig has me, I speak to your manager hair. (laughs) (sighs) Goodness. Now, the the lesser version of the Karen that's not quite as extreme is known as the Becky. (laughs) The Becky? The Becky. (laughs) And what is a Becky? It is also a pejorative American slang term for a white woman associated with a white girl who loves Starbucks and Uggs and is clueless about racial and social issues, being usually referred especially to a white woman who is ignorant of both her privilege and prejudice. Maybe the Beckys grow up to be Karens. Maybe. Maybe it's like, you know, like the the Pokemon evolution and like you start as a Becky (laughs) and then you go into a Karen, but what would come after Karen? I don't want to know. Someone's done this, I think, before. Speaking of these, have you seen the Karen Pokemon evolution that somebody did? That That's what I'm looking for right now. I found it. It's Pecky, Karen, and Susan. So a big time Karen is a Susan. <laughs> Which you evolve using your manager card. Yes. That's beautiful. I'm going to save this picture. <laughs> so this is shout hysterical. out to... Valu underscore art on Instagram. Yes, because this I will. Is I will have to tag them. <laughs> Please, maybe I'll share their artwork on our. Go ahead and just double check. I'm sure they don't care, but go ahead and I'll, ask I'll them. I'll message them. I'll ask them and be like, okay. "Hey, can we include your artwork?" <laughs> we'll but yes, tag apparently you. you start as a Becky, you go to a Karen, and you become a Susan, <laughs> or a Pecky, a Care Hen, and a Susan. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. This is so good. <laughs> That's great. Karen has become like an even broader term almost to just include anyone who is like unnecessarily rude and entitled, who is like flaunting their privilege everywhere. And we realized we see a lot of people at con, both the normies and the con goers that exhibit some of this behavior. Yeah. It is also yeah. good to know there are names for a male Karen as well. <laughs> I feel like they couldn't make up their mind on this. They couldn't. So the male Karen isn't as clear. I have found multiple places. Ken and Kyle are common terms for the male Karen, but the Urban Dictionary says that a male Karen is an Ian. I've heard the Ken and the Kyle, but I haven't heard the Ian before. I had not either, but I mean, Urban Dictionary says it's a thing, so you got to trust the Urban Dictionary. Sure. <laughs> I guess. Because <laughs> everything you read on the internet is true, obviously. Well, and I've actually probably had more experience with, like, Ken's in the con community than Karen's, but they do happen. And in the con community, typically it's going to be somebody who is oblivious to the people around them. <gasps> Because they are so self-absorbed in what they want to have happen, that they are oblivious to other people around them, they are definitely coming from a place of privilege, or they feel that they are entitled to something that they definitely are not entitled to. Also want to mention that, you know, we can talk about Karens because we have Karens in our lives, so it's fine. Well, yeah. We know Karens, so it's I fine. Can't, I can't be a Karenist because I know a Karen. So. Yeah, I know a Karen, so, you know, it's fine because I, I know a Karen. You know, I only see them, like, once every couple of years, but I know one, so it's fine, you know. Yeah. I don't I'm have anything still... against Karens because I know one. I still think it's really funny that people are upset over the fact that this is a term. It's like, this is not the same as any racial slur that you're comparing it to. But, like... If you're not from, like, a posh American suburb, why are they calling you a Karen? Oh, you can't just ask people why they're a Karen. Can't make Karen happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's just not going sit. to happen. You can't sit with us. <laughs> so we have had multiple different Karen interactions, but we're only going to cover a couple of them today. Yep, we're going to we're gonna categorize these for you a little bit. Because we probably have too many Karen stories for one episode. <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> We've done this for too long. This is fine. But if you all have con Karen stories, we would love them. Oh, yeah. We could totally do a follow-up. Please. Please give me your con Karen stories. Some people did give me some information anonymously, which is appreciated. Because as we talked about in our judging episode, you don't necessarily want to, like, call people out and embarrass them for things it's so okay I, to recognize the poor behavior but you don't want to put le like specific people on blast right so I, I did get some info anonymously from some people about some karen situations so in this particular case i won't necessarily be calling out like what was submitted or by whom because it was all to be kept anonymous some of the different karens are stage karen panel karen drunk karen and the infamous, may I speak to your manager, Karen? It's which my all kind. I can think of is <laughs> Violet from Willy Wonka. <laughs> Violet Beauregard. Yes. Just like screaming. Like she's the original Karen. <laughs> she wants it today. Give it to me now. Um, to be fair, both Violet and Veruca were definite Karens. That's true. It's oh, I think it's Veruca that sings. That turns into the blueberry, right? Uh, no, Violet turns into the blueberry. Uh, Veruca's the girl with the, the animals. Oh, <laughs> Veruca sings, to, the, I want today, she goes, I want tomorrow. She goes down the um, trash chute. Because <laughs> there's the whole, I want today, I yep. want tomorrow. That's Veruca. That's Veruca. Yep. She is definitely the original Karen. <laughs> she has an anthem. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I really want... An excuse to have a character that needs to sing that song. <laughs> Give it to me now. So we'll start with the most well-known and most popular Karen. May I speak to your manager, Karen? I think you need to do it with the Australian, like, voice. 
But you need to go, the most popular and well-known of the carrot species. This is the carrot and their natural habitat. Here, you will see their epic display of privilege and entitlement. Typically, this will revolve around wanting refunds for badges, entry into paid events, getting past lines, or wanting a deal in the dealer's room. Thanks for that, Explorer Ash. <laughs> I need a bush hat. <laughs> well, we need to get bush hats for survival guides, so. <laughs> yup. Someday. Someday, when we can do cons again. So yes, the the May I Speak to Your Manager Karen shows up a lot, typically with cons, for a couple different reasons. One of them definitely is, I want my money back, which could be for a couple different reasons that I have found. People ask for badge refunds a lot, more often than you may think. I don't get it. I have never asked for a badge refund, so I just, I don't understand the concept. The your... paperwork is right there. It says when you buy your badge, you cannot get it refunded. Depending on what the actual event is, sometimes you're not necessarily buying a badge, you're buying like a membership into their organization, which is also happens to get you a badge. If you enjoy anime cons, your money is going towards bettering anime cons, so why are you asking for your money back? Sometimes people will try to ask their money back for a variety of reasons. I got multiple reasons from people that I know that run conventions. It can stem anywhere from, you know, not being able to go anymore, so pre-con. You know, maybe somebody's sick, maybe, you know... Different things like that, trying to come up with crazy reasons why they need their money back. I do wish that they made it easier for you to, like, transfer badges to people. Yes. But, I mean, I get why that's a huge headache, and you don't want to do that right before the con. Sometimes people will try to ask for their money back at the end of the weekend, saying they did not enjoy the convention. But it took them this long to figure it out. Yes. Yep. So sometimes they will come and be like, I want my money back because I didn't like the con, and then they'll come up with all these different reasons that I but stayed the, the con entire weekend. time for. <laughs> yeah, kind of lines up with, like, the May I Speak to Your Manager cosplay competitor who, like, keeps constantly missing their judging time and then coming back demanding that we see them. Oh, We've had yeah. so many of those. We've it's had lots of, of those. So sometimes competitors will just constantly miss their judging appointments and then walk right into your judging room and demand that you see them right now because they yep. couldn't be bothered to come for the other two appointments you adjusted for them. Can confirm was there did happen. We have had this happen so many times. I don't get it. You have the entitled competitor that feels like the entire contest should somehow revolve around them. But it does. <laughs> And then they're so mad when you won't judge them. But how am I supposed to accept my award that you owe me if you don't judge me? Because we've had the, I didn't bother to sign up because I didn't feel like it. And now I'm just showing up at your judging room and you should judge me. We've had yep. the, I signed up but missed all of my appointments, but now I demand that you judge me. We've had the person show up like five minutes before the contest and demand that we judge them because they were too busy playing with their friends during their judging appointment. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on of how many, like, may I speak to your manager Karens we've had during a competition. <laughs> and I just don't get it because typically we're so chill when it comes to judging that if there is a situation, and we've had situations where we've had to wait until the last minute to judge somebody, and that's totally fine because it was justified. You just not showing up after we schedule you and then we reschedule you and we reschedule you like again. Like, no. Like, I don't care how good your costume is. I'm not judging you at that point. Yeah. If we're already done with deliberations, now is not the time. I don't I don't care. I don't care how good your costume is. And you can come and get all up in my face and I'm still not going to judge you. You couldn't be on time. The rules say... Be on time for your judging appointment or you do not get judged. Do not care in me during a competition. You will not win. You just won't win. I won't. I won't. Mm -mm. Nope. I won't take it. The other part of that is too that we always communicate those issues to the cosplay directors and they're always 100% on board with it. So like you can go above and speak to our quote unquote manager, but it's not going <laughs> to do you any good. I am the was, manager. It was them. 
When I am head judge, I am the manager. <laughs> oh, goodness. There's also the wanting to get in front of lines. The, I need to speak to someone because I can't wait in line and I need to get to the front of the line right now. And it's not like a health condition situation. It's like, a, I have a panel in 15 minutes and I really want to go in the dealer's room. So you all need to let me go. Because I've seen that. Where they're arguing with the person at the door to the dealer's room because they just walked past all of these people waiting in line because they have something in 15 minutes and they want to go in the dealer's room right now. I have a great, great plan. Come after. <laughs> or, you know, when there's the big line for some event and they feel entitled to get in and not wait in line. Seen yep. that a few times. You're not going to win, typically. I mean, they like... make VIP badges for a reason. Right. I'm like, just that's saying. what a VIP badge is for. Like, if you want to skip all the lines, buy a VIP. <laughs> there's none of this, like, grabbing the ticket and skipping the line, like at Disney. Like, no. you need to buy a VIP badge if you want to skip the line. That's what they're there for. And they have some places where you can grab the ticket, but if you don't grab the ticket, you're not going to get in, and you still have to wait in line. Hollering at door security is not going to get you to the front of the yeah. line. Don't abuse your convention volunteers, please. <laughs> yeah, no. My My favorite one, though, was there was one time at a convention that someone wanted their money back because they forgot about the convention until Sunday of the con. Oh, goodness. And so they were arguing with um, con staff about getting their money back because they forgot the convention was happening until Sunday. Yikes. <laughs> How do you forget that a convention is happening that you bought a badge to? I don't know. We got that like written on like three calendars in the house, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Like, I just don't. I don't know. Some of the other ones are also like parents arguing about buying a badge to bring their kid into the convention. That's typically why they offer discounted children's badges is because you still have to pay adult price for the adults. There's like a special subset of like, may I speak to your manager, Karen? And it's may I speak to your manager, Karen, parent edition, <laughs> where like these parents feel like somehow the convention is like a daycare center and that there should be people provided by the con to like watch their child all day and that mm. they shouldn't have to like buy a badge to supervise their child. Weird. Yeah, they're legit. Our parents who think that cons should be providing like basically <sighs> daycare services for their kids so that their like preteens and early teens can come to the convention without them. And I guess if they don't want to personally do it, they could always hire somebody to do it. But they think that, like, that should be part of the convention. Yeah, like, your badges isn't going to cover like, that. Like, some, like, frequently asked, asked questions of conventions, you will see, does the convention provide supervision for my teenager? No. Mm, yeah, no. We're going to make sure that they're not, like, screwing up stuff in the lobby, but that's about it. Like, you are responsible for your child. What? I know. I know. Being responsible for your own children? What's that? Parents do that? I don't know. You're so demanding. I wonder that sometimes in public. <laughs> Basically, our may I speak to your manager, Karen, is the person at con that is demanding a lot of things that they are not entitled to. There's plenty of that to go around. There is so much of that at con that it's kind of ridiculous. All right. What's our next Karen? Speaking of competitions, we also have the stage mom, Karen. Oh, no. Which really is the original Karen, if you think about it. Like, the term stage mom has been around forever. Yeah, it has. So if you don't know what a stage mom is, basically a stage mom is a parent that is trying to live out, like, their missed fantasy through their child and demands everyone around them see, like, how great their child is. Whether or not their child is talented is irrelevant. Like, that doesn't matter. I feel like matter. you're, you're going to see this a lot in pageants. Yes. You see this in pageants. If you live in areas that do a lot of, um, like, TV commercials and things of that nature, you'll see it a lot. Children's theater. I mean, we had them even when I used to work in kids' theater. The parent is putting a lot of, like, their own self-worth into what their child is doing. Yep. Which typically results in disruptive and entitled behavior from the parent. And possibly the kid. <laughs> so a lot of times the child will develop a similar attitude because children model their parents. 
The child sees the parent behave in this fashion, so then the child behaves that way. If you grow up your whole life and mom or even dad, because you see it with sports dads sometimes too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Puts these really, really high expectations on you based on what they did in their youth or what they wish that they had done in their youth. Their self-worth is tied to how well you succeed at this one particular topic. Whether or not you're actually interested in it or any good at it, then you're going to start holding your self-worth towards that. So either you're going to gain the entitled attitude or it's just going to be depressing because you're like, I can never win. So as far as cons, you are going to see this in the cosplay contest. And this is typically when you have like, it also goes with helicopter parent. But you're going to have this parent that's basically constantly hovering with this entry. I honestly have a feeling this is why a lot of cons don't let children compete in competitions. Because the only cons that I've had this issue with are conventions that allow children under the age of 14 to compete. Once they figure out who the judges are, they are not going to leave you alone. So they are going to constantly be trying to butter you up and tell you everything they possibly can about how great their child is. And how hoping that it's are. going to get them an award. Which I'm all about being proud about your kids, but they need to talk to us in the judging room. And you're welcome to put in input to help them with their judging experience because I know that not all the kids are going to want to talk about certain things or they might forget something. And that's totally fine. But we see right through your manipulations. <laughs> so you don't need to tell me about how great your kid is in school and we can have those conversations after the contest if you want to brag. I'm totally fine with it, but it's not going to sway our judging decision. Yeah, during judging, if the parent comes in the room, which they will, they will talk over their child. You will ask questions of the child and the parent will answer all of them. They might come to your panel and tell you about how all of your suggestions for competing or performing or networking or whatever your topic may be, how that's just not going to work for their kid. So it's kind of like the person that hunts you down after the competition. This is one of those people. They will likely try to find you after to find out where their child did not win. They will be upset with you. <laughs> yes, they will want to know. They may give you dirty looks from across the room. Oh, yeah, like looks that could kill because we've seen them. <laughs> yes. I'm alive. <laughs> and then as a judge, you quickly try to hide yourself so you don't have to deal with stage mom Karen after the competition's over. <sighs> you sneak backstage and leave that way so they can't find you. It's not a like productive thing for the kid. Like we don't try to hold this against the kid when parents like we've given awards to kids who have stage moms. But because the kid totally deserved it and not right. because mom was doing the mom thing. <laughs> I'll never understand that mentality that some parents have, but I'm also not a parent, so <laughs> I don't really get it. It doesn't seem very helpful. No, it seems very counterproductive. But kind of talking about having a parent like follow you to your panels so they can tell you more information about their kid. There's also the panel, Karen. Which is that person in the panel that constantly has to put their two cents in about literally every single thing you say in the damn panel. You mean like the interrupting cow? Interrupting cow? Moo. Moo. Every panelist has experienced this at some point. Oh, yeah. If you've been doing panels for any length of time, you are going to have that like backseat driver in the audience. So this is the person that needs to elaborate on literally everything you said extra points if they also feel the need to negate every single thing you say <laughs> we've been there a few times they love the phrase well actually <laughs> well actually well in my experience well when i did that i get this a lot when kinesio tape comes up in a panel which is really funny because you're a professional that uses it for your job yes but as and I discussed in our crossplay episode, people really don't care. I mean, really, look at the U.S. Do we really care what medical professionals say? Um, it depends on what state you're in, apparently. That's true. It does depend on what state you're in. But yes, this is the person who is going to sit in your audience and constantly interrupt you and basically act like an additional panelist that you did not ask for. From the audience. From the audience. <laughs> yep. You will notice that the rest of the audience is getting 
increasingly more perturbed about this situation as you go. Luckily, there are some formats of panels that we've been in where we can control the flow of information a little more and people are a little bit more courteous. We can take the commentary from different people and kind of keep the variety going, but sometimes they still try the whole time. So panel Karen was one of the reasons we stopped doing our panel on mental health. Because what would happen is inevitably there would be one person in the audience who would literally have to comment on every single topic that was brought up and then would talk forever. And there was no great way to redirect. And then people would feel like they didn't get out of the panel what they wanted to because somebody monopolized the panel. And group dynamics work only so far when you have a room full of like 30 people. Yes. There's a reason that in mental health, you're told to only have 10 people in a group because it's really hard to redirect when you have a lot of people. So, you know, someone would inevitably try to turn it into a therapy session, which the panel was not supposed to be that. And then it would be really hard to get off that track. And then when we implemented different strategies to try to prevent that, it then prevented people from asking questions. And so we ultimately decided it just didn't work. Because we either had no one talking or one person talking way too much. And there was no good middle ground for that panel. But it definitely is my favorite when they try to argue with me about Kinesi too. Everybody's got their topic. (laughs) So. We can't be done with this episode without talking about at least one Ken. Oh, of course. (laughs) So I bring you the drunk Ken. This typically occurs when normie functions are happening that require men to show off their manliness or involve a lot of drinking, such as weddings or sporting events. So like the baseball parents that come and stay at the hotel during the convention, the wedding guests that happen to be at the con at the same time that the convention is happening. They love to harass the attendees. Especially cosplayers. Especially cosplayers. They get a massive kick out of harassing the cosplayers and acting like they are somehow infringing on their space. Our friend Lorire, for instance, got pushed into a fountain in her cosplay at a anime convention once by a wedding guest who was drunk. He didn't like the cosplayers being near the wedding reception. Which is ridiculous because the wedding reception was really close to both the restaurant and the elevator. Well, exactly. Like, it's not a big hotel, so there wasn't exactly a lot of places to go. And there were event spaces on the second floor of the hotel. So like that were for the con and not the wedding. Well, but speaking of the wedding ones, you also have the Karen brides sometimes. Oh, true. Where they'll actually shut the escalators off because they don't want them (gasps) in their wedding photos or the elevators. Actually, it was the same hotel and it might have been the same wedding. They shut the elevator off. I mean, this is like a 15, 20 story (laughs) hotel. tell they shut the elevator off during the entirety of the ceremony because they didn't want it in the background of the wedding photo i forgot about that because we were trying to bring our set down and we had to carry it down the stairs because we couldn't go down the elevator Uh (laughs) uh-huh and then we found out later that it was because they turned the elevator off for the wedding yep (laughs) for some dumbass reason they set the like wedding like ceremony area up in front of the glass elevator well that's because where that's where the fountain is oh that's true but like you shut off an elevator when there's another event going on and there are other guests staying in the hotel that are not there for the wedding you did not pre-warn the guests that you were going to do this yeah like a sign would have been super helpful like Hey, FYI, at 5 p.m., the elevator's going to get shut off for a while while we do the ceremony. Like, no, that didn't happen. I still think that the drunk baseball dads are the worst. That's probably the worst story that I've heard about the drunks. Well, because they're also aggressive. Because that has the macho element to it, where it's like they got to show off their, like, tail feathers at you. Yeah, so you're you're combining the, the macho with the drunk and a little bit of the stage mom, Karen, all together into one thing for the sports dads. <laughs> so one of my favorite sports dad stories was at, at a convention that was being held in like a stadium. 
they weren't playing baseball at the same location at the convention, but they were staying at the hotel that was next door. And the baseball dads came and basically threatened like the con staff to let them into the convention for free because they wanted to come in. And the con oh, staff well, like <laughs> trying to explain it. to them that like this is a paid event and they can't do that. So then they stand just outside and continue to heckle all of the attendees with their kids present, mind you. That's some great parenting Heckle right there. All the attendees because they can't come into the event that the people are coming into. Way to be a great role so model. So security had to be called to remove them because they were standing there harassing attendees because the convention wouldn't let them in for free. So they could go do what? Harass more attendees? Apparently. I just <sighs> the sports parents are the worst. And you're always going to have a few of them when you stay at a hotel, whether it be hockey parents or soccer parents or baseball parents. But, like, the kids are also equally terrible. So, But that's a learned behavior. They're, like, destructive. They destroy hotels more than, like, con goers, I'd swear. That's when you run into the issues of, like, you know, if you have a con going on and a sports team think at the same time and the sports team is using the pool, they're probably going to make it so you won't stay down there because they want the pool to themselves. Things that they don't own, they're going to act like they own the hotel is basically what it comes down to. Why can't we all just get along? I don't know. I don't really understand why, like, why can't they just stay in their space and we can have our space And everything would be good. Or we could just check our privilege and be more aware of ourselves. And then maybe there wouldn't be so much entitlement floating around everywhere. What? What? I don't have privilege. My life is hard. (laughs) I can't even say it with a straight face. It's common sense that you're not entitled to a badge refund because you forgot about a convention. It's common sense that you're not, your kid's not entitled to win an award, yet for some reason there are people who feel that, like, it's not, that in fact it's common sense that they get those things. I've learned this thing about common sense where it's really not that common. It needs a new name. Yeah. Should it be, like, intelligent sense instead of common sense? What about just, like, sense? Just sense? (laughs) Sense. I don't know. I don't know. I agree with you. Common sense doesn't seem to be a thing that human beings do a very good job with. But that is our rundown of our Karens. Yeah, so be sure to send us your Karen stories, though. We would love to read them. And if you can think of any additional Karen types, we would be more than happy to hear about those as well. Yes. And as we said before, we're always taking listener stories, anything that has to do with cosplay, competitions, conventions, anime, manga, comic books, pretty much if you have something you want to send to us, feel free to do it. You can do that through Instagram or through podcastscs at gmail.com. True story. I am always collecting them to create other episodes. Who knows? You might just inspire us to do a new episode or get an episode pushed up. That's currently on our list to do. That's true, because we do have the never-ending list. Well, it, it, it does end. This is the list that doesn't. The one productive thing we did when we got together was actually have a business meeting and create a list of more episode topics. Of course we did. Because it's really well, hard to like... Brainstorming. It's hard to brainstorm episode topics through uh, Skype. Just the flow of conversations easier in person. So we'll be bringing you all sorts of interesting things that we randomly came up with over the weekend. All sorts of new goodies. Well, guys, it's been super fun, but we're going to cut out again. I'm Ashlyn. I'm Elle. We are Lavi Cosplay. And this is Shit, May I Speak to Your Manager, Cosplayers Say. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye. You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay-related story, absurd cosplay question, or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com.
Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should.